What's up guys? Recently I posted a video about my submission to the IFTTT applet contest and that was for the applet that manages the temperature in my lizard praxis enclosure. I wanted to do a little more detail about how I got that working. Uh, go on to a little more of the technical side um, and we're going to do that all from scratch. So let's get into it. What I have here is the ESP8266 uh, node MCU chip. Here's the pin out. Here you see all the GPIOs uh, numbers, which are different than the digital uh, pin numbers. So be careful about that because that will play a role in what we need to do later. So first thing we wanna do is get connected to Adafruit IO. Okay, so since we're starting from scratch, we've got an empty sketch here. And what I'm going to do is open up a couple examples because it really helps to uh, just copy and paste the code from the examples and then edit it down to whatever you need. So uh, we're going to use, uh, well, first, let's in make sure our board is installed. We uh, need the ESP8266 board installed. And the way we're going to do that is go to preferences and make sure this is put in the additional boards manager URL field. Uh, I will paste this link down in the description so you can just copy it from there and get started. Now, once that is done, you're going to go up to tools, blah, 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 boards manager, and then just type in ESP up here. And, oh, here we go. And you're just going to type in ESP up here and ESP8266 by ball ball community. Uh, right now it's 2.7.4. I think it's been 2.7.4 for a while. Uh, you're going to install that and you are ready to go. So then what we're going to do is blah, 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 include library, manage libraries, and you're going to search Adafruit IO. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Adafruit IO also installs like six or seven other libraries. So type in Adafruit IO Arduino, and one of the first results uh, will be that uh, by Adafruit. You're going to install that one. And last but not least, you need to install the DHT sensor library. Um, that is also by Adafruit, um, and it will let you use several of the DHT sensors. I only use the DHT11 simply because it's the one I've had the most luck with. It's still accurate within a couple degrees and a few percent uh, humidity, so I don't really need anything with scientific accuracy. So, uh, we are going to open up our examples now. Do -do -do. Adafruit IO Arduino, and we are going to open the publish example. Uh, this is just publishing a value to a feed, and we're gonna open this up right here and copy in all the things we need. So we need to include the uh, config file, which is up here. I'll show you what to do with that in a second. Include config, uh, int count, I'm not going to put that in just because uh, it's just a test value that they publish and we're just going to get right to our DHT so we don't need that. Um, we do need that. We're going to change it but we're going to use most of the script here. Void setup. All that is for connecting to Adafruit IO. So we're just going to paste that in and replace the setup that was in there. And the void loop. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and copy everything over. Uh, we're going to change the counter stuff because, like I said, we're just going to get right into the DHT11. <clears throat> as far as the config file, um, you're going to need your Adafruit IO username and key. And the way you find that is you go to your... Eh. Jeez, crazy. I wish Windows would fix that. Uh, you go to your Adafruit IO account at io.adafruit.com. If you don't have one, sign up. It's free. Um, and you'll be ready to go. It's super easy. You click on my key. I'm not going to click on it because I don't want everyone to see my key, but it'll show you your username and your key. And that is what you put in right here. 
Now, right here is how it connects to the Wi-Fi. You just put in your Wi-Fi. Mine is the Mothership or the Mothership 5G, but I don't think the ESP can connect to 5G. And then password, you just put in your password right there like you would type it into any other device. That's all you need to do with the uh, config. Um, I just realized uh, I don't know how to put the config file over here. So we're just going to use this. So don't bother opening up a uh, new sheet or a new sketch. Just open up the Adafruit 00 publish example and we're gonna modify it from here. And then we're going to open up doo -doo -doo, Adafruit just the sensor library and you're going to open up DHT tester uh, not the unified sensor I used the unified sensor thing before and I couldn't get it to work somehow it's probably my bad but um, the tester is just a short script that reads from the sensor and prints it out so we're going to copy over include DHT dot T or H and define DHT pin we're gonna change that but just don't worry about that for now um, right here, it defines the DHT type. Just copy over this one right here because we're going to use the DHT 11. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Okay, we're going to, this is the initialization. We want to copy that over. And like I said, we don't need that count, so we're going to get rid of that. We already have a serial initialization over here, so we're not going to copy that part. So this is just the uh, stuff that's connecting to Adafruit IO. Um, now down here in the loop, it's sending uh, the counter value, which we're not using, uh, to your feed. You're going to change this feed to whatever you want. We'll say test temp. And that will create a feed called test temp if you don't have one. And then it'll just send to that feed. Uh, once it's created it, it'll just keep sending to that feed. So, change all this to send to that test temp feed. Now we're going to want to get the temperature from the DHT sensor. So we're going to copy this over right here. That is the part that is reading the temperature. Um, uh, we've got this float in here that contains the temperature. We're going to serial print T uh, temp test temp test temp temp test temp. Test temp, test temp. Okay, got everything correct here. We're gonna change this to 5,000 just so we don't overdo it here. Uh, so yeah, that is how you get it working um, or you get all the script going. I have noticed that sometimes I will get an error about the, uh, something about the flash. Um, I just, if I get that error, I hit the flash button and then the reset button or vice versa on the ESP board. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead. Oh shoot, I forgot the COM12, okay. So we're gonna see if this works. It will take a minute or so to upload or compile and upload. Uh, I think it's just the Adafruit IO requires a lot more uh, muscle, so. Also, you're going to want to change this DHT pin value. Uh, I put mine on digital pin 5. So you're going to want to look at the actual pin out here. Uh, D5, that's GPIO 14. So you're going to use the 14 
value right here. And let's re upload that. Okay, so we didn't get an error this time. That's nice. Uh, it is connecting to Adafruit IO. Let's open IO feeds. Now one should pop, pop up test temp if we programmed it correctly. Oh, you know what I forgot? I, <laughs> I didn't modify this config file. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now upload that. Test temp should pop on up. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Test temp should pop up under feeds as soon as that's done uploading and then connecting. I usually get the error like every other time, but it hasn't been giving me an error yet, which is nice. Okay, so we're looking at the C report. We're gonna watch this. All right, it's connected. Now let's refresh over here. Boom, there we go, test temp. Uh, I don't know why it's just got one number in there. Oh, save T. That, that's supposed to be uh, the variable that you're saving, save variable. Um, I don't know why I put test temp there. Just a brain fart, I guess. <laughs> Trial and error, folks. This is how I learned it. I'm still just kind of stumbling through. <laughs> but I thought I understood it well enough to share with you guys. And I hope this is helpful. If you guys do use this, be sure to comment down below and let me know what you're using it for. Um, if you found it helpful, like, maybe subscribe if you're feeling it. Um, all right. Boom. There we go. Hey, look at that. All right. We should have, yeah, about every five seconds it's updating. Hey, there we go. So what I'm going to do is post, uh, this in the comments uh, just so you can copy and paste it all into your own sketch anyway guys I hope that was helpful um, I'm really glad it went so smoothly um, if you have any questions please just comment below I will be sure to uh, respond and answer anything you might be able to throw at me um, but yeah that's the easiest way to get it working that I was able to figure out again that's with the ESP8266 uh, node MCU board. Here's the pinout. Grab a screenshot of that. If you need to, you can just Google image ESP8266 pinout. Um, and something like this will come up. Again, I just use the ground and 3.3 volt pin to power it. And then the uh, D5 GPIO 14 pin uh, for the data. I have had trouble with um, bu 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 bu, which one was it? GPIO four, I think, or maybe it was D four, one of those. But if, uh, if for some reason a pin doesn't work, just try a different pin, make sure it's all plugged in correct, uh, correctly and, uh, you should be good. But yeah, hope you found that, uh, helpful. Um, do something kind for someone today and I will see you next time. Peace guys.